I'm ensconced in a snug little fishing hut on the banks of the Hampshire Test, only a few yards distance from the crystal stream and within a stone's throw of the almost historic sheep bridge, which has figured in so many angling articles. In front of the open door is a wide gravelly shallow covered with masses of waving weeds, brilliantly green and forming grand shelter for the large trout and grayling, which even as I write the sentence rise with a sonorous plop at a passing fly. Glancing through the little window on my right, I see friends H and M in solemn conclave discussing the merits of a pale watery dun or a macaw tag, but today is one of bright sunshine and the fish fully on the alert. The hawthorn bushes on the opposite side of the stream are certainly bright with blossom. In the pretty lane leading from Stockbridge to the old mill at Houghton, there is much to admire in the form of Virginia creeper, asters, sunflowers and chrysanthemums which adorn the gardens and villas and cottages on our way. I came down to Stockbridge on Monday, H&M having proceeded thence from Salisbury. Dismounting at the mill, I commenced operations at the hatch hole. H and M now joined me, and we walked slowly up the river, halting here and there to endeavour to deceive a rising fish. Our efforts proved unavailing. We retraced our steps and spent a pleasant half hour comparing notes, eating our lunch, and a pipe to follow. M promised to pilot me on the morrow, and he kept his word, as the course of events proved. We had a merry evening at the Vine. After dinner, we were joined by Southwest of the field and another member of the club who is noted for his great skill in deluding these wary Hampshire fish. Great was the symposium. Many were the tales of adventure in search of fin, fur and feather, followed by stirring narratives of the Indian mutiny. Until Southwest arose, kindled his bicycle lamp and we dispersed for the time being. The next morning, M kindly gave up his fishing in order to act as my guide, philosopher and friend, and difficult indeed would it have been to find a more entertaining one. Every yard of the way there was something of interest to which he drew my attention. His eyes were everywhere, nothing escaped his notice. Pleasant though this brief Hampshire holiday has been, I pen these lines with a feeling of some sadness. For probably, for the last time, do I sit in the little fishing hut and gaze on the sheep bridge and the beautiful river. On the last day of the present year, the Houghton Fly Fishing Club is to be dispersed and the fishing will now fall into other hands. Truly Houghton was a pleasant place to live near. Words fail to express adequately the feeling of delight those never-to-be-forgotten days and evenings at glorious test side created. Grim winter had vanished, the month of April all smiles and some tears reigned. Lovely was the walk through the marsh court water meadows. More hens flitted in and out of the brown sedges on the banks, jerkily flirting their little white tails Later on the birds would be followed by their tiny broods, which, not having as yet learned to dive, could easily be dipped out with the landing net. Snipe, far overhead, floating rapidly down the sky in a wide, graceful curve, bleating loudly during the descent. While somewhere in the distance, a cuckoo, now and again heralding the birth of spring. One met fishermen here and there with whom to exchange greetings for the first time since last summer. Many of these anglers own to names well known to Dryfly disciples, and they assembled from all parts, one enthusiast coming every season from far off India, but all drawn together by the irresistible magnetism of the grand rivers of Hampshire. Those who live near a river and are constantly on its banks see many interesting things, and some very strange ones. Kingsley truthfully said the ordinary wayfarer in the country saw but the outside of nature, whereas the angler saw the insides as well. Below the sheep bridge, some little way, was the charming and well-known mill, 
at which one of the members had quarters and dispensed lavish hospitalities to his friends. In fact, it may be said, to have kept open house. But our pleasant times on the beloved test were coming to an end. Happily, we did not know it. Eighteen halcyon seasons had flitted by all too rapidly, and then, without warning, the blow fell. The Houghton Fly Fishing Club died suddenly. If one could, on December the 31st, 1892, have seen what was passing in the mind of him who had homeward bound with fish, bag full of grayling, as he crossed the bridge at Boot Island for the last time, a blended picture of present sorrow and past pleasure would have presented itself. Even as he stepped on the island and closed the wicket, from force of habit, the destruction of the bridge had already commenced on the far side. The Houghton Fly Fishing Club died when in full vigour. At the time of its dissolution, the list was full, and with four names down for any occurring vacancies. So, on up past the sheep bridge, which is crowded with pleasant memories, and then to the hut on the shallows, often the rendezvous of many a joyous gathering of anglers, but now, on this last day, a temple of woe. Gone is the portly notebook of the club and its bracket. Gone are the appliances for making afternoon tea, put there by a benevolent member of the club. 116 years ago, on New Year's Day 1893, the Stockbridge Club, based on the first floor of the Grosvenor Hotel, regained the fishing around the village of Houghton after losing the water in 1873, when Dr. Wickham secured the lease. The Houghton Fly Fishing Club was formed by Dr. Wickham in 1875, and for the next 18 years, some of the most famous fly fishers of the time fished here. George Selwyn Marriott called the River Test, my queen of rivers. Since 1893, the Stockbridge Club has been known as the Houghton Fishing Club. They're still based in the first floor room they have occupied since their club was formed in 1822 at the Grosvenor. While the vine further up the high street still plays host to many famous fly fishermen who, as in Holford's day, still come from all over the world to fish Hampshire's celebrated chalk streams.